Hi everybody! Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, Mother's Day is just a couple days away and I thought it would be fun if one of the things I shared with you today is what Kevin decided to get for me for Mother's Day. But it comes with a little bit of a backstory. Just about a week ago or so, I suggested to him that maybe we could start saving some of the eggs from our silky hen to hatch out a few more so we could have some cute little silky hens running around. More than just the one hen we have. We have one hen and one rooster. Well, just to kind of back up even a little bit more, uh, silky hens, silky chickens are they're a type of bantam chicken, and bantam chickens are uh, generally smaller. I wouldn't say a miniature chicken, but they're smaller than the average chicken. And they're fluffy, and they're so cute, and I just love them. Now, they also grow, they also go broody or want to hatch eggs commonly, so there's more than just the cute factor of why you want to have them on your homestead, but Primarily the cute factor is what I was going for when I told Kevin I wanted to start hatching some uh, silky eggs. Well, he decided to surprise me and he ordered a mix of different colored silky chicks. And we were expecting them to arrive in the mail tomorrow, but the post office called and said that they have arrived today. So I haven't set up for them. Uh, it's gonna be kind of chilly here for the next couple days. So I have decided, at least for the first week, we're gonna put them in the house in a little brooder that we usually use for quail. So I can just watch over them and just admire how cute they are. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do on today's video is get ready for these cute chicks and uh, get them and open up the box and see how just adorable they are. Now, this inside brooder setup we have, actually, this is just a livestock water tank that fits in like a hallway we have here in the, in the house. I'm gonna put down some wood shavings, just some pine chips on the bottom. Just like an, an inch or two of pine shavings. I think we're getting 20 chicks because that was the minimum order from the hatchery and they're gonna be straight run chicks, which means they're not gonna be sexed. It's gonna be a mixture of males and female chicks. So as they grow up, I will determine which ones I think I wanna keep, which ones will probably end up selling. Uh, but I'm really excited about having an assortment of colors and uh, just to see how cute they turn out. Okay, so I've got the bedding down here. Uh, I need to get some water and some chick feed in here. We're gonna set up a heat lamp, and then when we're back from the post office, I'll open them up and we can see just how cute they are. Put the feeder right there. The water right there. Well, we're back from the post office with the smallest little poultry mailing box ever. I can't believe that there are 20 little chicks in here. So let's open them up, see what they look like, make sure they're all healthy and that they all arrived safely. There are a bunch of them in there. Look how cute they are. They're all huddled together because they're pretty chilly. A nice mix of colors. Now they haven't had any water, so that's the most important thing for us to do right now is to dip their beaks in some water over here so they can get their first drink. They're teeny. On the hatchery website, it says that we could get four different colors. Black, white, gray, and a buff color. And I think that 
I think that this will be white, gray, black, and this one, I can't tell if that's going to be buff or gray. I'll just have to see what they all look like when they come out. When I was on the hatchery website, just double checking information on these silkies, I realized that their description of the silky chicks was quite a bit better than what I told you guys. So I just thought I would read to you because it's just a really good description of these really cool chickens. Silkies are named for their unique fluffy plumage, which feels like silk. They have several unusual qualities, such as black skin and bones, blue earlobes, and five toes on each foot. They are calm and friendly and the most docile of poultry. They make an ideal pet. Hens are broody and make good mothers. Though they are fair layers themselves, they are commonly used to hatch eggs from other breeds. They are considered ornamental chickens, which I think is pretty funny. And it looks like they'll lay about 100 eggs a year. We try to have egg layers that are gonna lay at least 250 or 300 eggs a year, so 100 isn't great, but they are so adorable and are fantastic brooders or hatchers of, you know, fertile eggs and great mothers. So for all of those reasons, I'm super excited to have these new silky chicks and I'm excited for you guys to see them grow up and become part of our farm. We're out in the workshop and I wanted to show you guys some improvements that I've made to my quail setup. I told you guys in the last video that I've switched over now to 100% Jumbo Caternix Quail. I got my original breeders from a great farm called My Shire Farm. If you guys are in the market for uh, Jumbo Quail, they're definitely the go-to source if you can't get them locally. Um, this is the cage that I built several months ago. I showed you guys this right after I built it. This was designed off of the design from Terry over at uh, Caternix Corner. Uh, it's all in all, it has been a great design, but there were a couple things about it, uh, not about the cage itself, but, but, but about the feeders and waters that I was using that I just wasn't happy with. So I've come up with some new solutions. Uh, the first thing is, let's talk about the feeders. When I original, originally built these, um, I was using what are called J feeders, which are these kind here, like you would use for rabbits. I put some additional wire across the front so that the quail couldn't stick their head in and you know make as big of a mess. But to be honest, I think I was losing probably 25% or more of my feed every day that they were still able to just kind of fling out of the cage and it ended up either on the floor or on their in their pan beneath the cage. So I knew that I needed to do something different than these J feeders. I tried out a couple different things, but what I finally settled on is the same style of feeder that I've been using for years in my grow out cages, uh, but I had to make some modifications to make them work on these, uh, on these stacking cages. So let me show you what I did. Let me first show you the feeder inside of my uh, grow out cage here. I've got this cage separated in two right now because I'm keeping some separate, some females separate from the males. But this is the style feeder that I've showed you guys I've been using really since I started raising quail probably four or five years ago now. And basically what this is, is this is just a, a plastic tote. I drill holes in it and then I take these little pieces of PVC pipe. I cut them in about one and a half inch you know, width and then I hot glue them into the, into the tote here. There's something about doing this that makes the quail waste a lot less feed. I've tried it with just drilling the holes and not putting these pieces of PVC pipe in there and they still waste a ton of feed. But having this, just this little lip, I think on the inside is what makes it so when they fling their head around, the feed stays inside of the tote and doesn't come back out. So I like these a lot. Like I said, I've been using the same style for really all the time that I've been raising quail. And I thought I'd be able to come up with something better for, uh, these, for these breeder cages, but I've gone back to the same style. Let me show you though how I had to modify it to make it work over there. So I knew that I couldn't put one of these in each cage for two reasons. One, these cages aren't super big and I didn't want them to be in the way 
and stop the eggs from being able to roll out to the front of the cage. So what I did is I actually, I just attached these like shelving brackets to the sides of the cage. And then I made the same style of feeder, but I only put holes on one side. I attached that then to the shelving brackets and cut some of the wire off on the side of the cage. So the quail can actually now stick their heads through and eat right out of the cage. This system has worked awesome. I've been using this now for a couple months and they barely waste any feed at all. Uh, I did, like I said, I attached these so they're on here good and sturdy. Um, I just cut a little bit of this away so that it can fit flat up against the cage and it just makes it super easy. It's easy to come out here and fill it every day and it just has been working out really well and my feed is no longer being wasted. The other thing that I changed about these cages are the waterers. I've actually decided that in general, I'm giving up on automatic waterers for quail altogether. Um, for a long time, I was using this style of waterer right here. This is the little cup that they can just press on a little valve here. It puts a little water down into the cup and they can drink out of it. And when these work, they work really well. Um, but I've had some issues. One, this barn isn't heated and over winter these froze up very easily and a lot of times when they thawed then they didn't work right. Um, other times it wasn't even because of freezing temperatures. They're, they just kind of get clogged up and you come out in the morning and you know I would have like a five gallon bucket of water at the top and because one of these kind of got stuck an entire five gallons of water had leaked out and it's either making their pans here like filled up with water and poop or it's all over the floor and it just wasn't a good situation. So I've decided that I'm never going back to these kind again. At least that's what I'm saying right now. Um, I just don't see a time when I'll go back to these because they just don't hold up over time. So again, I was thinking to myself, the style that I use in my grow out cages is really what I like. It's just a, a chicken waterer. Uh, it's a one gallon water and if I could only use those inside of here, it would make life very easy. And so that's what I did. I came up with a way that I could use those in these cages as well. So over on the opposite side of the cage from the feeders, I came up with a system using these one gallon chicken waters that has been working really well. I've been using these for about a month now and it has made life so easy. So basically all this is, is I put a little shelf over here on the side of the cage and I cut away some of the wire here. And that allows for this water to sit on that shelf and slide in enough on the inside of the cage that the quail can drink out of that side of the water. Then I just have a little bungee cord that I put on here so that they can't push it away and escape. But let me show you that from the inside because it really does make a good water for them. So you can see here on the inside of the cage how much that sticks through. It gives them plenty of area to drink out of. And I have found that a one gallon water like this on each cage lasts about three days, depending on you know how hot it is outside and things. But uh, about three days only that I have to fill these. So, uh, you know, it really isn't any bigger deal than when I had a five gallon bucket on top because that five gallons was for all of these. So now each one is getting a gallon and it's about the same amount of work. In my uh, quail barn here, I don't have a water supply. So I just keep a 50 gallon drum of water. I keep it right near my quail so that what I need to fill one of these, I can just undo the bungee cord take this over, fill it up, put it back on the shelf, and we're good for another three days. And this system has worked out really well. There's really no way for it to leak. It has made it so that there's really no more mess, and it has just been a great system. The other nice thing is in the winter when it was still freezing out, I actually have you know another set of these, so I could take one in the house, bring a fresh one out, and just swap them out you know, once a day. It made it really easy, and in general, this system I think is what I'm gonna use for everything from now on. Well you guys, that's what we have for you today. Uh, we wanna to talk to you real quick about a struggle that we've been having 
here on our channel about making videos for you guys and just in life in general and that is the way that the weather has been here in the Missouri Ozarks for the last couple months. You know, we talk with you guys about, you know, we've got all these plans and all these projects, but all of that has just really uh, came to a standstill. For sure, this past week, we've had about five out of the last seven days have been completely rainy. And a lot of rain. We got five inches of rain in the last 24 hours, and we're supposed to get another two to three inches of rain tonight. Right. Uh, and even the two weeks that we took off of filming for YouTube and we got a bunch of work done, we still on those weeks had uh, weeks, I think one week we had three days of rain, another week we had four days of rain. Right. So honestly, you guys, this is starting to wear on us a little bit. Uh, we're starting to get a little bit discouraged, but know that it's not going to last forever and summer is coming one of these days. Right. In the last six weeks, we've had almost 15 inches of rain, 13 yep. or 14 inches of rain in the last six weeks. And, you know, we were hoping to be done with our huge new pig pens that we're going to be building. We were hoping to have those done already. Uh, we haven't even started on them because of that. Um, there's just all kinds of things here, you guys, that we were hoping to be able to bring you by now. And we just haven't been able to because the weather has just really put things at a standstill. So we hope that you guys will be understanding. Uh, many of you are probably going through the same things that we are going through. Just rain, rain, rain mixed with a bunch of wind and then more wind and more rain. Right. Yeah. And it's, it, it's a struggle when you live this lifestyle because you end up inside looking out the window thinking of all the things that you need to be doing. And, you know, we don't mind working in a little sprinkle, right? but when you're getting, you know, five or six inches of rain in a day, uh, that's just way too much to get anything done. So please know that we have so much in store for videos and for you guys in, you know, the coming up weeks and months and stuff. We just need to get through this rainy time so we can just keep working really hard and as quickly as we can. We hope that you are enjoying our content. And if you're not already a subscriber, we hope that you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. So you will be notified as we put out new videos and move on to these newer, bigger projects for you. And remember that the best way that you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. It helps so much. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by your homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.